Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind. Another day, another Democrat witch hunt video. So I'm sure by now you've probably heard the news. I mean, trust me, you will probably not be able to live your life for the next 48 to 72 hours without hearing this news. There's going to be billions of dollars worth of content being put out there telling the world once again that the walls are closing in and Donald Trump is done this time. A DC federal appeals court has put out the decision that Donald Trump does not benefit from presidential immunity in Jack Smith's January 6 case. I know, I know, shocking news. The media is acting as if it's some sort of big surprise, but it really isn't. You mean to tell me that three Obama DC judges came to the conclusion that orange man bad, therefore presidential immunity doesn't apply, not surprising at all. While this obviously isn't the decision that probably Trump wanted, it's not surprising and also it doesn't really change much. Let me tell you what the media isn't. We've got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so let's first start off by going over the decision. I have a couple excerpts here to show you. These are the main highlights from the three panel judge ruling. For the purpose of this criminal case, former President Trump has become citizen Trump with all the defenses of any other criminal defendant. But any executive immunity that may have protected him while he served as president no longer protects him against this prosecution. Now, I find this a little bit interesting. It seems as though they're attempting to set the legal precedent that once a president leaves office, he becomes a private citizen and he can then be investigated, indicted, and sentenced for things that he did during his time as president, his official actions as president, as chief executive of the nation. The way I interpreted or I understood presidential immunity was that your actions pertaining to your job as executive are protected by presidential immunity outright, I would assume that that would make you immune indefinitely, that the actions you took officially as president of the United States, unless impeached by Congress, you basically can't be indicted on said actions. I feel like that's what makes sense. This idea that presidents can just be indicted as normal citizens for official presidential actions in office right as you leave the Oval Office doesn't really seem to make too much sense to me. You mean to tell me that Barack Obama doesn't have any presidential immunity for all the collateral damage, you know, drone striking children in the Middle East? And when Trump wins in 2024, he could simply start indicting former presidents willy nilly for their actions as commander in chief. It makes absolutely no sense to me. But that is the decision that was made here. They continue, moreover, past presidents have understood themselves to be subject to impeachment and criminal liability, at least under certain circumstances, so the possibility of chilling executive action is already in effect. Properly understood, the separation of powers doctrine may immunize lawful discretionary acts, but does not bar the federal criminal prosecution of a former president for every official act. So those are the most important highlights from the actual ruling itself. You kind of see where they're going. As you can tell, not the greatest decision. But as alluded in the intro, we were never expecting Trump to win this immunity appeal. I always kind of referred to it in joking manner. Because you imagine leftoid brains exploding if Donald Trump is simply handed immunity and Jack Smith's case goes poof. Generally, that's how I presented the idea. We weren't expecting him to win in a DC court of appeals, but rather simply to delay. And delay it has. This decision, first of all, comes, I think, well over a month since the appeal was launched, it took so long for this decision to be released that Jack Smith's March 4th trial date has already essentially been cancelled. And now there's this sort of appeal buffer period. As top legal mind Jonathan Turley writes on Twitter, crunching the numbers, Trump can seek corrections in the short term, but even without a correction to the opinion, he has 45 days to seek an end bank where the government is a party, and he then has 90 days after the rejection of any end bank decision. So even without factoring in review time for the circuit, Trump could extend this process 135 five days absent of a successful move to expedite. The 90-day period alone would put a petition into May. Any rejection of appeals without an expedited calendar puts this into the summer. That is without delays or a successful grant by the DC Circuit, which is unlikely, or the Supreme Court, which is uncertain. After that appellate line is tied off, the parties would have to return to the trial court to presume the pretrial work, which could take months. That puts the trial very close to the election and would raise obvious concerns giving the long-standing DOJ policy to avoid trials within a few few months of an election. While Smith would likely try to expedite, the question is why the Supreme Court would suddenly see a need to curtail the time or process when it previously denied such efforts. There is no longer a scheduled trial on the docket, and Smith is the prevailing party. And so essentially what that means is that Trump has 135 days just baseline, not counting bureaucratic delays and any other curveball that might pop up in this case. And so based on the most conservative view, that essentially puts the trial dead in the election. Not exactly a good look. The only way to avoid that 
that is for now Jack Smith to continue to push for a expedited process, but so far, the Supreme Court hasn't been playing ball with little Jack Smith. The media is going to go on this big parade as if this is this big thing. Oh, Trump is definitely done this time. This is a huge blow. Legal loss for Donald Trump, but from my very limited understanding, mostly piggybacking off of legal minds that I trust and I've been following for years, it seems as though this D.C. appeals court decision changes very little here. The only hope that Democrats have here is that somehow, miraculously, Jack Smith gets approval on his attempts to expedite this case, but I think that's very unlikely at this point. And so it's not the bombshell breaking curveball that the left is pretending it is. It's not exactly good news. It's not exactly bad news kind of expected news. It doesn't change much. And obviously, Jack Smith's little case here is still in serious jeopardy. That's pretty much what I got for you guys on this one. Hopefully, you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.